Hi, this is Jeff Garrett with the Ascent Performance Group and today I want to talk to you a little bit about a book that I just finished reading. It's called Eat, Sleep and Move by Tom Rath. Tom, as many of you probably already know, is the best-selling author of a book called Strength Binders 2.0 and this is a book that he wrote through the Gallup organization and many of you have probably taken Strength Binders. If you haven't, make sure that you contact me because I can help you with that. But Tom wrote this book because at the age of 16, he was diagnosed with von hippel lindaus uh, a genetic disorder, and he just did a ton of research just to try to figure out how to live a happier, healthier life because he knew that his time was going to be limited, and he knew that he needed to figure out a way to live longer and live healthier. So there was a lot of research that went into this book. And Tom continues to do research in these areas of eat, move, and sleep. There's 30 chapters in the book, and the book starts out by telling us that over two-thirds of Americans are either obese or overweight. And then it goes on and it in the 30 chapters and talks about sleep, movement, and also eating. So a couple of key points I pulled out on sleep. Uh, Kay Anders Erickson uh, did a human performance study. Many of us know this study because it was the 10,000 hour study as far as to becoming an expert at something. If you worked on it for 10,000 hours, you became an expert. But there's another part of this study that not many people talk about, and that's his part on sleep. What he found in his research is that top performing athletes gen and top performing pe people generally get an average of 8 hours and 36 minutes of sleep while the average American gets only six hours and 51 minutes of sleep a night. So that means many of us are actually sleep deprived and that six hours and 51 minutes is during weekdays, of course. And then researchers have found that 95% of us need at least seven to nine hours of sleep. And so one way to get better at that is just gradually add 15 minutes of sleep to your night to the point when you wake up in the morning and you feel totally rested. Now there are different ways to measure that. Uh, number one is just your general level of well-being or happiness that you feel. And number two, you can get yourself some sort of fitness measurement device, uh, so an iWatch, uh, a Fitbit. Any, I personally use the Fitbit, but you can use any, any of those type of measuring devices that you can wear and it'll tell you roughly about your restful night's sleep. You could be in bed for a long time but still not get restful sleep. So you would have to uh, go to bed maybe 15 minutes earlier a night until you found that level of sleep that you were getting that you felt really good in the morning when you woke up. According to one scientist that has studied sleep extensively, missing four hour, only four hours of sleep is the equivalent of drinking a six pack of beer. So if let's say you normally get seven hours of sleep and you only got three hours that night, the next day you would function the same way a person that drank a six pack of beer would function. So sleep can have a huge impact on how you do function, how you do feel, and how you do perform. The other thing that uh, Tom points out here is to make sure that you sleep in cooler temperatures. If you have a house that has different temperature gauges or settings, thermostats on different levels of the house, you could actually make your one level the level you sleep on cooler than the other levels. So as far as movement goes, uh, sitting actually, scientists have found, increases the risk of heart disease. And it, sitting is called uh, really basically a heart attack maker is what sitting has essentially become. And many of us have jobs today where we sit a lot in that job. And what's recommended in the book is every 20 minutes that you actually get up and move a little bit. In, in fact, uh, five minutes of for every when you move for five minutes you're going to increase your mood dramatically by just that five minutes of activity after you've been sitting for a while in fact a lot of the smart watches actually today they'll they'll uh, you can set up an alarm or they'll automatically set up to go where it'll actually shake your wrist and give you a little bit of vibration to get you to actually move uh, what they found is what many of you probably have read and some of your uh, smartwatches if you wear those they go off when you hit 10,000 steps and 10,000 steps has been um, made to be known as the magic number of how much the least amount of movement that you should move in a day 
Uh, exercise will improve your mood for at least 12 hours. So a good reason to exercise in the morning or at the midday is because it does increase, it's found to increase your mood. Uh, physical activity is also uh, the pharmaceutical alternative to improve sleep. Uh, many people don't need sleep aids, but they found that if you actually get physical activity, you will sleep better and you will go to sleep faster. And the other thing that uh, to a lot of us is really important is that exercise actually slows down the aging process. So scientists have found this to be true. And then when we move on to eating, uh, set a goal to eat food that is one gram of carbs for every gram of protein. And the other thing is when you have those good foods, put those foods at eye level. Uh, put your fruits and vegetables that you like to eat out to where you can see them and they're easy to access. And re a key thing is we eat a lot, as Americans, we eat a lot of sugar. Uh, every, in fact, in North America, we eat a lot of sugar. So re work to reduce your sugar intake and replace those chips and those crackers and other, other snack foods that you eat with nuts, seeds, apples, celery, and carrots. Another thing that uh, is recommended in the book too is to use smaller plates because we tend to fill our plates to the size of the plate and also to use duck, dark colors because the dark colors are colors that match the color of your food. Your food will tend to blend in a little bit with that and scientists have found that we tend to eat a little bit less if we have that. A uh, key for leaders, uh, many leaders and organizations will start wellness programs. So what we wanna make sure that we do is put your own health and well-being first. It goes back to that example of the talk I gave is when you get on the airplane and you pull down that air mask and you place it on yourself first so you can help other people. Uh, it's that speed of the leader, speed of the team concept because if the leader is t saying one thing you're telling your team that, hey, we need to have this well-being program, but you aren't well yourself, the team's not going to follow the well-being program. They're going to look at you as the leader to see what should be done. I'd like to end with a quote from Tom Rath, and that is, eat right, move more, and sleep better. For information on coaching, contact me at coachjeffgarrett at gmail.com. That's coachjeffgarrett at gmail.com. Or go to my website to learn more through our blogs and our upcoming podcast. Uh, and that is www.theascentperformancegroup.com. And remember to be great. <laughs>